One of the most profound quotations I've ever heard is this, if you don't read, what advantage have you over those who can't read? And recently I attended a book club that made me even more passionate about this subject of reading because this quotation came from the book we were discussing. And this is not fiction, this is a true story. When I think back on all the refugee camps I visited all over the world, the people always asked for the same thing, books. Sometimes even before medicine or shelter, they wanted books for their children. I'm reminded of Job 23:12, which says, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Um, is it possible, though, going back to this story of the refugees, is it possible that these refugee parents know something that we have lost track of? And then, um, from my book club, this, a teacher of some 40 years experience com commented that every teacher she has ever talked to says that reading is the most important thing in a child's educational life. And I would dare to say that that cause and effect equation continues into adulthood. We know that older people often trace their character, their courage, their philosophy, morals and ethics to the teaching of their parents. Their parents pass down a heritage helping us to know who we are. And often those morals came from the Bible as well as other good books and stories with moral persuasions. What happens to fill the void when this dynamic doesn't happen? What fills that void? And then I saw the Baltimore riots and I thought we have lost the heritage of who we are. I vividly remember the mother who went after her son whom she had seen looting and rioting and she screamed at him. That's not who we are. She was so right and I commend her for it. But tragically, I think we have lost the knowledge of who we are. Surely it is highly unlikely that you will go out looting if you have not lost sight of who you are and who you are supposed to be. If parents and grandparents are not passing down a valuable heritage to you, if you are not getting fed and challenged with ideas and concepts and even dreams, then perhaps you are being starved, starved of your identity. It's all about identity, a kind of root in yourself that ties you to doing the right thing. Without that identity, what is there to hold you, to restrain you from looting or any other criminal activity? Do you think that if those rioting had been helped to find their talents and to find what they were good at, who they were or who they were supposed to be, that they would be rioting and looting? And this question of ID has taken on an even greater significance in the light of the expose of Planned Parenthood harvesting and selling of body parts. I cannot believe that that is who we are. That is not what this nation is degenerated into. That is certainly not who I am and I think that as a nation that is not who we are. We must oppose these practices and denounce them as evil. And tragically, it seems that we have lost our way, lost our identities, not only as individuals, but as groups and as churches. I attended a concert in a church the other day and I began to wonder whether the ones who were churchgoers there were aware of the views of their founder. Sadly, I think not, and I base this on hearing many conversations about this, but again, it's a matter of losing our identity. Losing your identity causes you to, to become disoriented. And on this same subject, I would like to mention the book Jesus Wars by well-known historian Philip Jenkins. The subtitle is brilliant. How four patriarchs, three queens, and two emperors decided what Christians would believe for the next 1500 years. I think that the world would look very different if we understood our history. 
we seem to think that what we are what we have in the religious world today is the result of good men following the teachings of Jesus. This is the absolute opposite of what Professor Jenkins has found. In this case, it is very dangerous not to know the truth. Philip Jenkins summarizes for us in the most dynamic way, where did orthodoxy come from? By this, he refers to the creeds, the statements of faith, what churches refer to as salvation issues. Where did, they, where did they come from? And he says this, what ultimately became accepted as Christian orthodoxy was hammered out in a process that was painfully slow, gradual, and often bloody. This conflict was marked by repeated struggles, coups, and open war warfare spread over centuries. It is easy to imagine another outcome in which the so-called orthodox would have been scorned as heretics with incalculable consequences for mainstream political history, not to mention all later Christian thought and devotion. And so, you must ask yourself after reading this book and being challenged by these facts, did the good guys win? Or was it more like eeny, meeny, miny, mo? First one side being the heretics, then the other. So Jenkins asks if it was just chance that we have the understanding that we have today. The winners wrote history. Is it reliable? Is there any possibility that they just made this stuff up? This is my analysis of our religious history taken from Jenkins' book. It is not a pretty story. It is a story of profane wrangling, violent faith, gangster-like synods, countless reversals, and then reinstatements of previous councils, murder and mayhem. Professor Jenkins' most profound contribution, I think, is this that the church councils which were responsible for the present-day creeds, in quote, remade a faith, end quote. This is, of course, huge. We think we have the original, but we have a remake. What we are left with is not version one, which Jesus gave us. It is version two, the remaking of the faith. It is positively dangerous not to know how the creeds came about. Do yourself a favor. Read The Jesus Wars, how four patriarchs, three queens, and two emperors decided what Christians would believe for the next 1,500 years. I have a review at 21stcr.org. And I ask, who were these men who, were, who decided what we would believe who forged your theology? Were they worthy of such a task? It's dangerous not to know. Please check it out.